as you study the intelligence of nature and across the different fields of math and science and art, how do you feel like the geometry of nature is helping us know ourselves deeper and deeper? Interesting. Well, I can only speak to my own personal yeah. journey on this. I think it impacts people differently um, because we all have our own window of perception and we can't separate our lens of perception with our reality, right? So I can speak to my particular experience. And my particular experience was I went through a very difficult time in 2016 where I had to reconcile betrayal. And you don't ever feel betrayed by somebody that you didn't care about. You only feel betrayed by people that you really cared about. And so there gets to be this massive gap between expectation and what your reality that you experienced was. And instead of um, blaming others, which I probably would have done at you know, earlier stages in my life, I decided to look within and ask myself, you know, maybe my perception on my reality is not exactly as it truly is. Maybe I'm seeing the world as I am rather than as it is. And in order to reconcile these things, I had to go and reconstruct my entire objective reality. So the reconstruction process uh, included a deep dive into mathematics, the queen of the sciences, the most objective, right? If you talk to anybody, the nice thing about math is math is just math, and you can't, math doesn't lie, right? Um, but at the same time, mathematics is very esoteric. So we have numerology, and we have astrology, which is another branch, you could argue, of mathematics as well. And it's all related to frequency, and the entire universe is based on frequency, and then you start thinking about, well, wait a minute, geometry and music are related too. And maybe music is just the geometry that we experience with our ears. And maybe geometry is just the music that we experience with our eyes. And so I got a very personal relationship and a deep dive spiritual relationship when I went through that process to recognize that everything is connected. You know, Leonardo da Vinci famously said, um, to achieve a complete mind, study the art of science, study the science of art, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. And when I kind of heard that for the first time, I started really recognizing, I think, what he really meant by that, which is that your reality and our reality is this beautiful geometric scope of experience. And that scope of experience can span across what we refer to as geometry and what we refer to as music and what we refer to as light and what we refer to as sound and what we refer to as matter and what we refer to as, as the, the geometry of space-time. All of it, biology, chemistry, is all connected. You know, I can make an argument that says that mathematics in its applied form is geometry. So therefore, applied geometry is physics. Applied physics would then just be chemistry. And applied chemistry would be biology. And applied biology would be psychology. And applied psychology would be sociology. And applied sociology would be philosophy. And applied philosophy comes back to mathematics. So it's this total connection across all of these seemingly disparate disciplines in our life experience that leads us to recognize that, wait a minute, it's not all separate at all. It's all one. And that geometry in all of its different manifestations and forms across all those different disciplines and specialties is turning us back to recognize the oneness of the universe. And then that introduces this concept of who created it. <laughs> because the thing that with geometry, when I started getting into it, and there's something beautiful you have on your wall just outside Metatron's cube, right? And most people probably don't know unless they're into geometry what the significance of Metatron's cube is. Do you know what the significance of it is? Um, it's the well, the interconnectedness between the flower of life and mm -hmm. um, like the meaning behind Metatron's cube. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your explanation. Yeah, I figured you might, might want to hear it. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Most people make that connection you just said, right. which is absolutely correct. Flower of life and Metatron's cube are definitely one and the same thing. You could say that. You're just taking a few of the circles away yeah. and just making sure that the circles that stay are the ones that are next to each other, mm -hmm. right? And so there's none of the overlapping circles that you have of a flower of life. Yeah. But then you connect all of the center points of those circles and it creates Metatron's cube. Right. But 
a lot of people don't realize that you can form literally out of that one structure all of the platonic solids. Not only all the platonic solids, but all of the Archimedean solids by making another form of Metatron's cube, just offsetting it by 15 degrees, and then having a 12-point perspective, you can have all of the Archimedean, all the Catalan solids. Virtually every single geometric form that exists in the universe can be made in its regular form out of that one structure of Metatron's cube. So all creation comes from this. And this is one of the things that I did. I took a 24-point perspective. So if you took four Metatron's cubes, right? So you've got six points on each one that form this hex hexagonal form. If you do that in rotation so that you've got a 24-point, so you're just multiplying mm -hmm. six by four, mm -hmm. so you're creating four-point perspective against the six points, and you connect all the lines of that, it looks like an entirely mess, like a gigantic mess of entropic lines that you could, it gets really confusing because you're like, what the heck am I looking at? But if you can put your consciousness into those lines, the complexity of all those lines, you might be able to see the shape of a square. You might also see the shape of a triangle. And most people can. You might see the shape of a pentagon because it's all in there. You might also see the shape of a, a hexagon or you know, all of the other potential shapes that could exist in polygonal form. But can you also then see a tetrahedron, which is the three-dimensional version of a triangle? Mm -hmm. One way to easily say this. Can you see a cube? Can you see a dodecahedron? Can you see an icosahedron? Can you see a cuboctahedron? Can you see a rhombi cuboctahedron? Can you see uh, a Durer solid? Can you see all of the different shapes that are there? And the degree that you can recognize through pattern recognition and then bold those lines, you are uplifting your consciousness and your ability to perceive higher dimension. Mm. So the more geometric forms you can recognize and track by looking in this mess of lines that looks totally entropic and it makes no sense whatsoever, and then bold those, to me, I call that a higher form of consciousness quotient. Mm. So the more of those lines you can recognize, you're pushing the boundary condition of entropy, which is really just ignorance, further and further away from you as you understand more of this divine encryption that is the universe that we live in.